Harmony One, ready to explode by 90%. Let's get into it. So Chris, um, Harmony One has seen some phenomenal, you know, growth in the last few weeks and um, things have been correcting most recently. The question really becomes, is the correction over and are we likely to see an explosion to the upside? As we get into this, guys, if you find it useful and informative, do hit that like button. We both really do appreciate it. And uh, if you want to know about hidden gems like the Harmony One token, um, learn about new cryptocurrencies and make money, why not consider subscribing to the channel? By subscribing, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. It is free, you'll be kept informed, so why not? With that said, Chris, is there anything else you'd like to, to, to tell the guys before we jump into this? So I think the, the first thing is let us know whether you're delegating your, your, your one harmony tokens or whether you're keeping them on, ex, on an exchange and just interested to, to get an idea of how many people are actually delegating and making their harmony one tokens work for them um, and, and who's decided to keep them on an exchange or, you know, in, in, in a hardware wallet or a, some sort of wallet. Just interested to know, just trying to get a feel for, you know, how many people do actually delegate. Um, just be really interested. There's no right or wrong answer. I just thought it'd be really interesting to, to engage with you guys. And Nick, is it worth sort of talking around uh, a little bit about the poll? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so, you know, a, another, I guess, reason, reasonable epoch. I think we had a little bit of a drop off uh, in returns. And this was this was mainly down to, to, to the uh, number of uh, Harmony One that we've got uh, delegated in the pool, Nick, isn't it? It is. There's, um, it's quite a complicated process, but basically we get to delegate uh, or split our delegated or stake into multiple different shards, right? But uh, we also have to make sure that we are always elected. So having the right number um, staked per shard is absolutely key, and it has to be the same across them all. So for example, if we have a 15 million um, you know, one tokens delegated into the pool, then we can add that across three shards with 5 million in each shard. The problem really comes with uh, making sure that your bid to be elected is also above the threshold, which currently comes in at about 5.7 million. So currently we're not in the position to add that third additional slot. Um, so we are actually seeing slightly diminished returns rather than the high returns that we have seen in the past, such as 19%. Uh, we did average out at around 12 for a while, Chris, and uh, unfortunately in the last uh, epoch, because we've got you know just under the, uh, the threshold there, we actually dropped to 10%. Um, return but we are working on this guys so do bear with us the second that we get um you know a little bit more one delegated into the pool we'll be able to add that third um slot and uh, you'll be earning some really nice returns because we'll be underbidding and yet still being elected and thus um the returns should probably be around that 14 percent. so we are slightly more volatile that's because we're trying to game the system here and ultimately maximize the returns that we can do for you guys so yep yeah, it's um, it's an interesting process chris yeah, definitely. And we appreciate everybody that's delegating to, to the pool. Uh, you guys are amazing. Right. With that said, let's jump over to the desktop and uh, take a look at uh, the Harmony One token. Let's do it. Right. So here we are. This is um, you know Harmony One to the USDT. This is the daily chart and we are using Binance for our data source. Now, in this particular video, we're going to be doing a little bit of technical analysis on the daily chart, the four hourly chart and the one hour chart. We're going to be looking at several different things. We'll obviously look at the candles and where they're forming and whether there's any good key areas of resistance or support. And um, we'll also take a look at the Fibonacci retracement tool. We'll have a look at the moving averages as well as the RSI. Okay, and uh, ultimately we're going to see whether or not this thing is ready to move to the upside or if the correction is still to go much deeper. And so what we're going to do is start with this daily chart. We have a Fibonacci retracement on here from the low level of the 11th of March. We can see this upward swing all the way up to the top here, which, uh, which actually happened on the 24th of March. So we got that high. And uh, obviously we did start to correct down and we actually consolidated down on the 702 area of this Fibonacci retracement. And um, that's actually worked as a really good support area for the one token so far. Normally, though, when we have a retracement, we always talk about 
hitting one of these key areas here, which is the 618, the 50% or the 382 area of this Fibonacci retracement tool. So we haven't actually hit any of those. And um, so that's an interesting thing to point out. We'll have to see if uh, if there is still room to the downside uh, and actually to, you know, take out that 618. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes a 702 is all it's going to require for us to get that bounce to the upside. Um, but, you know, nine times out of 10, we are expecting like, one of these three things to kind of happen here. That hasn't been the case with one. So maybe the top hasn't even been found yet. We can see the moving averages are way down here on this chart. So they're kind of out of play at this point. The RSI is uh, basically just on the line of overbought. It has come down considerably from that higher level of 91. So we can see here, if I'm not going to put a horizontal ray here, Chris, um, actually, I'll go with a horizontal line. I'm going to just draw this on here so you can see that high point we come to a few times in the past. So that's a nice key area there. We can see that we came up nice and high and we're coming right down. So we're corrected nicely with uh, a reasonable amount of damage to the price. The volume, which is currently hidden, I'll turn that back on. We can see that's also been coming down quite nicely as well. So the volume's nice and low at this point in time. So everything on this one day chart is actually lining up pretty nicely and um, isn't anything too scary at this point. Considering we haven't even hit the 618 um, and that comes in at 15 cent, I still plenty of room uh, in both the down way, downside and, and upside. But nonetheless, the key area of 90 uh, or 90 on the RSI has been hit and we've called off and we're still on that 70 line on this daily chart. Um, but however, with that being said, in the past, we've come down to that area and bounced right back up again from here as well. So everything to play for. What we're looking for now is to look at that four hourly chart and that one hourly chart to see if that going, if that, if those particular charts confirm whether or not we are going to continue a downward trend or actually bounce up back to that 90 area on this RSI. So without any further ado, let's jump down into that four hourly view. And here we get those moving averages coming in as well. We have the 50 moving average, the 100 moving average, and the 200 moving average. So we can see here that actually we're getting closer to that 50 moving average now, and that could be an area of support for us as well, as specifically as it starts to collide with that 702 Fibonacci extension or retracement zone just here. So that's a pretty good sign to things to come as well. And the volumes have been decreasing quite nicely here, and they are incredibly low at the moment. And that's also a very important thing to notice, because that means that the price is actually going to be quite stable and we can trade sideways without doing too much damage to price. We can see that the RSI is actually quite low, Chris. It's at, six, uh, it's at 47 now, so below that midway point, and is much deeply or much deeper corrected than the daily chart. So the daily is on 70, but yet the four hourly is at 47. So those things are not quite marrying up. And uh, that means that there's a lot more room to the upside than there is to the downside on this four hourly chart. And that gives me a lot of hope for the future, as does that low, low volume. So things are looking quite good on this four hourly chart. And I mean this in you know many different ways. One, we can see that 50 moving average approaching our candles, and we could get a bounce from that if it works out as support. So we're going to be watching that very, very closely. We can see the volumes are nice and low, and um, the RSI has declined quite nicely and is in a pretty good spot on this four hourly chart. So things here are you know, not actually as bad as they may seem on the daily chart. So things are not quite as clear as they need to be. Let's jump down into that one hour view, Chris, and see what else we can, can kind of confirm. We have uh, our 100 and our 50 moving averages actually kind of colliding together here and getting tangled up with the candles. So neither of those have actually formed into support on the hourly chart, but the 200 moving average is now fast approaching. And I would imagine that that's going to be an area of support going forward, specifically if it does collide with that 702. We're gonna watch that one very, very closely. Um, sometimes though, we do actually go below all those moving averages as this RSI gets corrected. And when that happens, you know categorically there's nowhere else to go but up from there. Um, and we also often say this, Chris, if you're below average and your RSI is at the bottom, where else are you going to go but up? So we're going to watch that really closely. Things are starting to heat up here on the one token, specifically on this hourly chart. We can also see that the volumes are really low. They've stabilized quite low and they were decreasing much sharper than they are right now. That means there's a bit of a trend shift here. We can see that the patterns were quite steep on their decline um, over a bigger macro view. And yet, um, as we kind of draw that out again, they kind of flatten out and that's a bit of a change. Specifically, if we look at that 
view there that's actually an increasing over a bit of period of time so i'm gonna have to watch this one if that volume stays low or actually that could be now flipping and moving into a higher volume right now things are in an interesting zone we're maybe a bit too early to actually record this video chris but i imagine by the time this video has gone out we've seen some significant movement here with the one token price the RSI, as I kind of briefly mentioned here, is incredibly low. It's actually below 40. It's at 38 at the moment. Anything lower than 30 is technically oversold, and you should be incredibly confident in the price going to the upside. And um, I'm very confident, Chris, that actually this, uh, this correction for the one token at the moment appears to be dwindling to an end. And therefore, there's potential to the upside imminently. Um, so let's go ahead and pull this up to the daily view which is the only view that we can see, which actually shows us um, a bit of a different opinion. So the daily is showing us that actually we're overbought and the volumes are decreasing and maybe we're going to dwindle down a little bit further and get corrected towards the lower end of this um, RSI. However, that's not really possible because the four hourly view and the one hourly view is already really low on this RSI. So therefore, to fall this thing down to a significant level on the daily, it just isn't going to happen. Instead, what's likely to happen here is you might get a small decline, maybe to 60 at the absolute most, before bouncing back into the overbought area. So one to watch out for here, because I think ultimately this might not actually be that steep of a correction at all. We haven't even hit the 618 and things seem to be, you know, running out of steam to the downside. It looks like the four hourly and the hourly are actually taking control of the daily here and the daily is going to start to turn and to uh, yeah, become a little bit more bullish. So I imagine that the price in the next 24 hours, Chris, is going to increase quite significantly from the current position. So that's one to kind of watch out for. Now, when in terms of 90% uh, that we mentioned at the beginning of the video, well, 90% does take us up to that first price target. So in the same way that we saw a, a move from here to here, we could start seeing a significant move and a breakout from that all-time high level of 22 cent towards our 33 cent price target which comes in at the 1.618 area on the Fibonacci extensions. This is a 90% move from the current position and um, absolutely could be something we could see in the next sort of week or so, Chris. This is a, an important move as um, I think things are going to start heating up here once again for the one token. I do, however, still expect there will be a correction due. I just do not think that that correction is uh, going to be happening um, you know, in the, the, the short term. I think that's going to be maybe a little bit further down the road at this point. Um, Chris, is there anything else you would like to add at this point in the video? Just, just you know, hoping for, for some some news about some of the, the, the work that's happening in the background. I think, you know, that's always going to help at, at this stage in, you know, sort of the price discovery phase. Um, but, you know, for me, I say it all the time, you know, solid project, solid community, and, you know, it's got everything going for it, right? Um, I'm surprised that um, it's taken this long for, for some of the bigger YouTubers to, to be talking about it. I think it's getting a lot of airtime now. And, uh, yeah, I think it's just, you know, everything's sort of lining up now quite nicely for, for Harmony One. Um, you know, we've been impressed and invested for, for, for a fair amount of time. Um, and it, it's great to be able to talk uh, more regularly about Harmony One. It, it really is fantastic. So hopefully, guys, you did find this video useful and informative. If you did, then please do go ahead and hit that like button. We both really do appreciate it. And if you want to know about those hidden gems such as Harmony One, um, learn about new cryptocurrencies and make money, then why not go ahead and subscribe? By subscribing, you're going to be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. It is free. You'll be kept well informed. So why not? And with that said, we hope everyone has a fantastic day and we'll catch you all in the next one. Yeah, take care.